during a day's visit to Cavity Island near Wellington, our distinguished American naturalist, Dr. Olaus J. Murray, and his 17-year-old son, Donald. They're in this country to take part in the New Zealand-American Fjordland Expedition. One of the first sites to be seen is a set of tripods, belonging to whalers who used the island in the early 1800s. Before then, Cavity was the stronghold of the notorious Taraparaha, whose body is believed to be buried somewhere on the island. Dr. Murray is director of America's Wilderness Society, which has much in common with our own Forest and Bird Protection Society. He's a lover of nature who spent the greater part of his life out of doors. His enthusiasm leads him wherever there's something of interest to be found, and he certainly doesn't choose to do his exploring the easy way. Nothing escapes trained eyes. This is one of Capiti's small inhabitants, a rockhopper penguin, which is one of a species that uses the island as a breeding ground. The penguin's not quite sure what to make of all this. His dignity's ruffled, but otherwise he's unhurt. Dr. Murray shows an interesting piece of seaweed to Mr. Lindsay, the caretaker of Cavity. He found much to interest him during his visit and was able to see some of New Zealand's native birds, like this kaka, for the first time. Cavity is one of New Zealand's bird sanctuaries, and the doctor described it as ideal for the purpose. Large numbers of red-billed gulls nest here, with only an occasional visitor to disturb them. The study of wildlife has taken Dr. Murray all over the world. He hunts without a gun and is taking full advantage of his opportunities for observation in New Zealand. Sea cadets of the Navy League hoist their colours at the home of the High Commissioner for Canada, Mr. Albert Riv. Mr. Riv congratulates them for some of their number go to Canada in July to attend the first Empire Sea Cadets camp. The cadets go as the guests of the Navy League of Canada. At the function, Mr. R.C. Addison represents the New Zealand Navy League. The High Commissioner presents the party with two silken Canadian ensigns, one of which carries the crest of the Canadian Navy League. Two officers and 12 cadets, three from each centre, are to attend the camp which will be held on the banks of the St. Lawrence. A charge of gelignite is being laid to blast chalk from New Zealand's only operating chalk quarry near Oxford, North Canterbury. Chalk is a soft, fine-grained limestone composed of the remains of minute sea life which lived in this area while it was underwater millions of years ago. The chalk is broken up and bagged for transportation to the company's refinery in Christchurch. Most of us are only too familiar with its use in schools, but chalk has other more important uses. It's essential to the manufacture of paint, putty, rubber goods, oil cloth and wallpaper. The raw material is crushed and after being dried in this kiln is bagged for distribution to industry. Though this is the only chalk works in the country, it has a capacity of 60 tonnes a week and is supplying a large proportion of New Zealand's requirements. The new lake which has been formed by the damming up of the Waikato at Katapiro was the scene of this year's New Zealand Amateur Rowing Championships. 22 clubs entered for the various events and a record crowd of 15,000 watched the races from the old riverbank. In the championship double skulls, six clubs were represented, and as in all championship events, the course was a mile and a quarter. Auckland's West End club nearest the camera cracked on the pace from the start and took the lead for the first few hundred yards. The Tony nearest and Adamo on the far side were next to show up, and they forged ahead with Adamo going slightly faster and soon taking the lead.
Patoni passed the tiring West End pad, and as they neared the finishing line, Patoni on the near side overhauled Adamo hand over fist. It looked as though they might get there, but Adamo made a supreme effort to hold their lead and win by two feet from Patoni. It was Adamo's first victory in the double skulls, and this year's crew were Jay Snyder and Dee Simonson. In the championship senior fours, Avon led Adamo, Napier and Port Chalmers on one side of the course, and on the other side, Patoni were rowing fast ahead of Auckland and White Amata. With 100 yards to go, Avon was head more in reserve, and with a terrific finishing burst, passed Avon right on the line to win by a canvas and give Adamo their second national title. Seven scholars started in the championship singles, with title holder Snyder of Adamo in lane one nearest the camera. Snyder took the lead almost from the gun, and a good tussle seemed likely when Heglin of Wairau drew away from the others to challenge for the lead. But near the quarter mile, Snyder went outside a boy marking the course and lost seven lengths, getting his unwieldy craft back into line. All excitement went out of the race as Heglin led by six lengths from Fisher and Abbott, with Snyder tailing the field in an impossible position. Heglin won comfortably by four lengths from a former title holder, Abbott of Patoni, with McCartan also of Patoni third and Fisher of Mercer fourth. Chris Heglin, the new single skulls champion, represented the Wairau Club of Blenheim and is the son of a former champion oarsman. Most sought after title of the regatta is the championship eights, the blue ribbon of rowing where teamwork counts as much as individual skill. The six competing clubs shot away in line abreast with West End nearest the camera and stroking 40, having a slight edge on the others and establishing a narrow lead. Tony also showed up early but couldn't keep up the pace and were replaced by White Amata in the stripes. And on the far side, the favourites Adamo, who recently won the New South Wales title, moved up into second place ahead of White Amata. With quarter of a mile to go, White Amata was still in third place with West End rowing strongly in the lead and holding an advantage of three quarters of a length over Adamo, who were challenging hard in an all-out effort to retain their title. But the West End crew answered every challenge to be first home with Adamo second and White Amata third. It's West End's first national title since the club was formed in 1884 and the major upset of the championships. The success of the regatta and the ideal conditions of the lake established Katapiro as New Zealand's number one rowing course.